being posted. All right, we're recording this. Um, so we are recording it. So we're gonna ask you to stay on mute and then off camera. So this can be available for the members and for your use as you're studying through it. Um, if you have not already, I highly recommend that you get onto the HFMA website and sign up for the uh, C uh, CHFP um, online session. There is a lot of material that we simply cannot go over during these sessions today. And there's a lot of reinforcement and practice um, opportunities for you as well, particularly as we talk about getting into formulas and calculations. Um, it's very important to get out there and do those practice materials to reinforce what we're going through today. Please put any questions that you have in the chat. Um, if it's technical in nature, we'll try to answer it. If not, we will answer it at the um, end. Um, and certainly feel free at the end to come off mute um, and ask your question live. Happy to have the, the uh, interaction there. So um, we're gonna be going through this pretty quick today. As I mentioned, HFMA Florida chapter is hosting some education events today. We've got a great session at, uh, uh, I think it's uh, one o'clock on the No Surprise Billing Act, which I know we're all really excited about. Um, so we're gonna try to wrap up no later than 1240, 1245, uh, the latest we have to be off. Okay. And my typical, sorry, uh, moving my slides. The beginning does not wanna work. Hold on one second. There you go, sorry about that. Um, so what comes to mind when we talk about health uh, costs, particularly as we talk about healthcare? In healthcare, this sometimes appears as conflicting uh, priorities. Managers in the healthcare industry certainly have a high degree of responsibility for taking care of patients. However, at the same time, the expenses incurred to pay for patient care, such as salaries, supplies, and medicines, are increasing. Regardless of one's position in the healthcare industry, physician office, hospital, or health insurer, cost is a very important concern to all of us. And the definition of cost in healthcare has different definitions that need to be considered. Depending on one's position in a healthcare transaction, cost may be the amount paid for a service, such as the price paid by a health insurer or the patient to a physician or a hospital. Conversely, cost may be defined as the amount paid for salaries to employees or the amount paid on an invoice to a supply or medicine vendor. And health insurers do need to maintain relationship with providers that are cost competitive. The amount of expenses incurred by an insurer determines the premium that a health insurer charges to its customers. If the insurer must pay higher prices to physicians or hospitals, the insurer will charge higher insurance premiums and may lose subscribers to competing insurance companies. Further, employers that provide health insurance as an employee benefit are also impacted by health insurance premium increases. Many times they are passed down to employer, employees um, since the employer cannot take on the entire brunt of that increase in premium. Um, and the benefit costs are often a point of contention between employers and employees due to that cost shifting and can impact the competitiveness of US businesses. Therefore, the need for competitive operating cost has relevance to healthcare providers, a physician office or a hospital, as well as insurers and the broader US economy, you and I included. The key item, we're gonna review the types of costs, direct, indirect, variable, and fixed. So the key item with direct costs is that they are the cost directly associated with providing services or products. Again, depending on what it is that the entity is operated for. Think salaries or supplies. Indirect costs are those made up of those costs necessary to operate the business but are not incurred in the provision of services to patients, customers, or clients. Think facility operating costs such as maintenance, security, 
are utilities. Indirect costs can be variable or fixed. Variable, variable costs, as their name implies, vary directly with the volume of services provided. So if the number of patient visits increases, the cost of supplies used in patient care should increase as well. Fixed costs, on the other hand, remain constant within a range of operational volumes, regardless of the volume of services provided. Examples of such costs include the lease paid on a physician's office, loan repayment on a piece of equipment, or basic monthly support fees for a computer system. Total cost is the sum of variable and fixed costs in a healthcare organization. And then the cost relationships and behaviors illustrated here apply equally to health plans as they do to physician offices or hospitals. So semi-fixed costs are those costs that show the behavior of a variable cost, increasing with volume over a period over a range of service volumes. A step variable cost is a cost that remains fixed over a finite level of volume and then increases incrementally at a higher level of volume. A key assumption in the discussion of cost behavior is time frame. Most all discussions of cost behavior assumes a short term time frame defined as less than one year. Long term time frame extend beyond one year. So the discussion in this unit presumes a short term horizon for consideration of cost and operational volume. And you can see an example of what a semi-fixed looks like, and then an example of what a step variable is. So semi-fixed is fixed per discharge payment with an outlier provision, and then provider is paid a fixed amount up to a specified length of stay or cost charge level above which an additional outlier payment is made. And then a step variable includes items such as customer service with minimum level of staffing requirements, and then as membership volumes for a health plan in, in, improve. So key concept slide. So we're gonna get into some questions here. Um, ABC Surgery recently executed contracts for services um, to support its operations. It includes a $1,000 uh, retainer per month plus 250 per hour for legal services. Um, how would these expenses be classified? Um, I'm going to presume we're having some issues with uh, throwing off our key concept slides today. So we'll give everybody a minute to uh, review that, uh, answer the question um, in your, uh, what do you call it, um, head, basically, uh, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, apologies, Christine. For some reason, the uh, polling feature is not allowing me to launch the poll. Okay, that's okay. We'll walk through it. Okay. Um, so the answer is C, semi-variable, semi-fixed cost. So the fixed cost is the $1,000 retainers per month that we know they have to play. The 250 is a variable cost because you don't know how many hours they may use for that, that slide. Okay. A common challenge among managers is to understand what is the cost of providing a specific service to a patient or customer. Determining the direct cost of a, of a service can be fairly straightforward. A more difficult challenge is to understand how much benefit that department or subset gains from the support provided by indirect or overhead costs. Cost allocation is a process by which indirect costs are assigned to a part of the organization that actually provides services to a patient or a client. Since a solid understanding of the direct and indirect costs of a service is essential to setting a fair price for services, it is equally essential that managers understand all of the costs associated with providing a service. At the same time, managers have a challenge of fairly allocating 
indirect cost among different parts of the entity that provide different services to a patient. The amount of indirect or overhead cost to be allocated is called the cost pool. If, the co if that cost pool serves multiple different areas of the entity that provide different services, the cost pool is broken into multiple parts, one for each revenue producing area. The cost driver is the basis upon which a cost pool is allocated among different revenues producing functions. As pressures mount on healthcare entities to become more price competitive, a keen attention to all costs of providing services, direct and indirect, is essential. It is important that at the end of, the, of a cost allocation exercise, that all indirect costs have been allocated to all service providing areas of the entity. We often use the distinction of revenue producing departments to describe those direct service providing areas of the entity that incur direct costs. The term non-revenue or overhead department is used to describe those areas that incur indirect costs. So looking at this example here, you'll notice here that not all of the 6,000 square feet or 5,000 square feet, um, 6,000 square feet, sorry, is included here, but only the 5,000 square feet occupied for revenue producing functions. Although there are costs associated with taking care of non-revenue producing areas, think revenue cycle, the total cost is allocated over only the revenue producing areas so that the total housekeeping costs for the clinic can be considered when setting prices for each area. In so doing, the clinic can be better assured of generating revenues sufficient to pay not only direct cost but those indirect costs as well. The allocation method illustrated here is known as the direct method, where the cost from overhead functions are directly allocated only to revenue producing areas. Some situations may require the cost allocation to account for the fact that some overhead departments obtain benefits from other overhead departments. This approach that takes into consideration the interrelationships between overhead departments is one used by hospitals and nursing facilities and is known as the step-down approach. While direct allocation is not permitted on Medicare cost reports for hospitals and nursing homes, the step-down approach is permitted. The step-down approach is required to be used in preparation of the Medicare cost report by hospitals and nursing facilities. The step-down approach starts with one overhead function that serves the most other departments, usually administration, and spreads its cost to other functions in the organization, including other overhead functions. So the overhead function having the next most service to other functions has its cost, plus the cost allocated by other overhead functions to other areas of the organization. This cost allocation approach is illustrated in the, it's the diagram. The direct and step-down approaches are effective in estimating costs at a high level, such as within an entire clinic, hospital, or even a department within such an organization. So activity-based costing. So a drawback with the direct and step-down approaches is that neither is particularly useful in estimating the cost of a specific service or activity, such as a clinic or emergency room visit. This could be very important in a situation where a manager needs to determine the cost of a specific service to determine a price for that service for the purpose of negotiating a specific payment rate. This is known as activity-based costing or ABC. 
The process of completing an ABC analysis can be broken into various steps. Gathering total data and activity statistics, and then allocating the cost of activities to a service. And this is the first part of an ABC analysis is illustrated here. Note that the services are broken into component parts and a cost per unit of service is calculated. The total annual costs for each activity are usually obtained from the accounting records of the organization and the amount of each activity used in a service is determined from direct observation are time and motion studies. So a key concept slide, the basis upon which indirect costs are allocated among different revenue producing functions is A, cost allocation, B, cost pool, C, cost driver, and D, activity-based costing. So I'll give you second a few there, so. Okay. All right, the correct uh, answer here is cost driver. Cost allocation is the method of assigning cost, not the basis upon which costs are assigned. A cost pool is a grouping of costs, typically by department, and then the ABC analyzes where costs are coming from overall. So correct answer is cost driver. It may seem a simple notion to determine the cost of providing a service and adding a profit margin above that amount to arrive at a price for services. However, in the complex and competitive world of healthcare, other factors may influence just how much a healthcare entity can pass through its full cost to its customers. Healthcare provider entities such as physicians or hospitals in urban areas may face significant competition for businesses from employers or insurance plans, while specialized or rural entities may find little competition to influence their pricing decisions. So for example, when I was at University of Maryland Medical Systems, uh, some of the hospitals that I manage were in a very rural area um, in Eastern Maryland. Um, and so our competition was minimal. Um, people, if, you, if you're familiar with Maryland, um, you have to go over the Bay Bridge to get to the Annapolis area from the Eastern shore. Um, it's, people don't like going over that bridge. Um, so, you know, really we did not have a significant amount of competition. Um, we really were the, you know, the only ones in that particular area. However, if we now look at the facilities that we had in the Baltimore area, as I really believe that there is a different hospital and a different entity on each corner of Maryland, <laughs> downtown Baltimore. Um, so you had Hopkins, you had University of Maryland, you had MedStar, you had LifePoint. I mean, just significant hospitals. I, I keep on naming if I had to, but so the, you know, the competition there is significant. So entities that operate with little competition can use a full cost pricing approach where all direct and overhead costs and a desired level of profit. And again, we know profit is considered to be an economic cost and must be considered in pricing services. Under a full cost pricing approach, the price for services covers all costs of the services plus the desired profits. Buyers in this situation would have little leverage to entice a service provider to lower prices since they have few, if any, alternative sources for that service. Hospital or physician offices in competitive markets may find it necessary to set prices below full cost. The sum of desired profit, indirect and direct cost in order to offer a price low enough to attract customers. In such a situation, the seller of service, hospital, physician, or health plan must offer a discounted price that does not cover full cost. In general, a seller will offer a lower price to a customer that buys more of a service, essentially trading a lower price 
for higher volumes of sale. In such a situation, the seller will set its pricing using a marginal cost pricing approach. This requires a manager to make difficult decisions on how much cost can be included in the price charge to a particular customer based on a value judgment of how much customer volume will be gained for that lower price. This cost shifting strategy is frequently used in physician clinics and hospitals where lower prices are received from government insurers, Medicare and Medicaid, and negotiated from insurers that have large number of members that can generate large volumes of patient referrals. The lost revenue from discounts given to those large volume buyers is made up by the higher prices charged to the other customers. Since marginal cost pricing does not cover all costs, the approach must be used judiciously and only when there is the ability to garner enough volume of services to fully cover all indirect costs and in total generate a profit sufficient to sustain the operations of the business. In no case should a hospital, health plan, or physician accept a price that is below the direct cost of providing a service. Each unit of service provided should fully cover the direct cost of service and generates at least a small amount above direct cost to defray indirect costs and generate a profit. This amount is known as the contribution margin. Simply put, contribution mar margin is revenue minus variable cost. Contribution margin is the, is the contribution right, that revenue makes to covering direct fist costs and, and from a certain volume level on and a margin towards also paying for indirect costs. Health plans and healthcare providers may take on some degree of risk in its pricing when setting fixed fee prices such as capitation rights per discharge prices or insurance premiums. In such a case, the entity will make an assumption that some customers will be profitable and others may not. But in the aggregate, a price offered to a buyer will be profitable and set prices based on a target cost. The entity using this pricing strategy will set a cost level that they expect to arrive at in total for a given block of customer services and that's then set prices sufficiently above that to generate a profit. So a key concept side, walk through this, a manager using marginal cost pricing is unable to re realize a profit. Which of these methods will enable him to resolve this issue? A, forego making a profit. B, reduce indirect cost. C, shift cost to other customers. D, increase volume. The correct answer is C. The manager must make a profit. He will have to reduce some prices to attract higher volumes of customers and shift some cost to other customers. Health plans have two different approaches to apply target cost pricing. In the early days of commercial insurance in the United States, health plans used a community rating approach to set prices based on the cost incurred to provide services to all members of a local market area. The group rating approach breaks a community down into smaller parts or groups and determines the prices they pay based on the risk of needing services for a specific group. Since competition may require a healthcare clinic or organization to price its services below full cost, it is essential that a manager understands 
the volume or price needed to recover the direct FISC's cost. Break even analysis is a simple procedure that can assist managers in understanding the relationship between variable costs, fixed cost, revenue, volume, and profit. So a good example of um, key concept slides. And as I mentioned within the CHFP online course, there are a lot of calculations and practice that will really reinforce these. So highly again, encourage you to go out and work through those. So if ABC Clinic plans to add a new service that will generate $75 per visit in revenue and incur $50 in variable cost per visit, it will also have 10,000 in fixed costs per year. What is the break even number? keeping in mind that revenue divided by visits minus the variable cost is equal a contribution is equal to a contribution margin per visit taking total fixed cost dividing that by contribution margin dividing that by visit is equal to your break even number of visits in this example the correct answer is c 400 uh, visits is their break even number So to wrap up, um, managing cost is important at all levels of an organization, from the executive office to the individuals taking care of patients or maintaining a healthcare facility. An executive can certainly have influence on operating costs through decisions to hire additional staff, setting pay rates, acquiring new technology. Frontline employees who provide services can also have a significant impact on cost if they are careful in the amount of resources they use for a task. Truly, managing costs can be influenced at all levels of a physician office or hospital entity, which translate into the prices paid by consumers and the government for health insurance. And as I mentioned, we're wrapping up early so people can get on for other sessions. Uh, again, HFMA, no surprise billing at one o'clock. Um, so I'll open it up for questions. I believe there was a question in the chat. Let's see if I can get to that. It was not a question, Christine, when you said okay. that we need, this is Candy um, from West Virginia HFMA. When you said that we need to make sure that we contract with payers above that contribution margin, um, I just said it would be great if you could have that steal with each of our state Medicaid programs. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not going to happen, right, Candy? Correct. <laughs> Probably not going to happen. So, um, other questions? Okay, feel free to come off mute if you have a burning question that you want to know about. Well, I'm going to presume that uh, that was a lot. Um, there's a really good reason uh, that when I was uh, at Penn State, I stopped doing accounting. <laughs> and today's session is a really good example of why I went into revenue cycle, not into financial accounting, because there's a lot of concepts to understand. Um, again, do go out. If you've not signed up yet for the CHFP online course, um, try to take those uh, practice sessions. There's a lot of material that we simply cannot go through during the, our times together. Um, so certainly bring any questions up um, next week. Again, we are training to the HFMA materials, which is what the basis of the exam will be. Um, so any questions, certainly feel free to let me know. I think most of you have my contact info. Feel free to reach out to me should you need so. And happy studying. Have a good week. Um, we will have a different uh, presenter next week as I will be traveling for a conference. Um, so I will talk to you in two weeks. And hopefully I will see some of you maybe in Minneapolis in November. Woohoo! Um, so have a good week, guys, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Take care and thank you.